Almighty God, humbly acknowledging our need for thy guidance in all things, and laying aside all private and personal interests, we beseech thee to grant that we may conduct the affairs of this house and of our country to the glory of thy holy name, the maintenance of true religion and justice, the honour of the Queen, and the public welfare, peace and tranquillity of New Zealand, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Honourable Murray McCulley. Mr. Speaker, I seek leave to um, make a personal, uh, make a uh, ministerial statement. The minister, uh, standing, order 340, three, standing order 347. The minister is entitled to make a ministerial statement. Speaker, I wish to take a brief opportunity to update the House on recent developments in New Zealand's relationship with Fiji. As has been reported by some media, I took the opportunity of a transit through Fiji last Saturday to conduct further discussions with my Fiji counterpart, Ratu Anoki Kaburambola. My meeting with Minister Kaburambola last Saturday followed ongoing email contact over many months, a visit to Nandi by myself in early January, and a trilateral meeting involving Minister Kaburambola, Australian Minister Stephen Smith, and myself in Canberra earlier this month. We have two objectives in carrying out this dialogue. First, we wish to start to restore the diplomatic capacity in our super mission that has been depleted by progressive disputes with the Fiji administration. We have, since July 2007, lost three heads of mission, a trade commissioner who was the spouse of one of the heads of mission, as well as losing the capacity to replace both police and defence attaches as they departed. This has seriously threatened our capacity to deliver the range of services that we would expect to deliver from the mission, including our capacity to conduct meaningful dialogue with the Fiji administration. It is fair to record also that recent expulsions have affected Fiji's Wellington mission in a significant way, and they have been similarly motivated to improve this position. Second, it's our objective, having improved our capacity to conduct the relationship, to attempt to resolve some of the significant and strongly held differences that exist between us. That will not happen tomorrow, but I do hope that it will happen over time. The first phase of these discussions is essentially bilateral in character. It's understood and accepted by our Australian friends uh, who, while they've lost one head of mission late last year, have in every other respect uh, a normal working mission in Suva with a staff complement in the mid-twenties. If and when the dialogue touches the restoration of High Commissioners, the three-way conversation will resume involving Australia. I've kept closely in touch with my Australian counterpart, Stephen Smith, who I briefed most recently last night. When wider issues touching sanctions are under discussion, there will naturally be a need for the Pacific Forum and potentially the Commonwealth to engage. I was able on Saturday con to confirm the appointment of, a, of first secretaries in our respective missions. Fiji's first secretary has now taken up her appointment and our first secretary, Philip Tala, will take up his position in Suva early in March. Fiji has sought an honorary consul appointment in Auckland to which favourable consideration is being given. New Zealand has today put forward the name of a senior Ministry of Foreign Affairs official for the position of New Zealand Trade Commissioner in Suva. I have been assured that this proposal too will receive favourable consideration. I'm aware that there's been some media speculation in Fiji that I might meet with Interim Prime Minister Bainimarama when he's in Hong Kong next month. It is correct that at this stage our respective diaries placed both uh, Mr Baini Marama and myself in Hong Kong for two days in March and that in principle we have agreed to take the opportunity for an informal meeting if this proves logistically possible. I want to reiterate today what I've stated on previous occasions. Our engagement with the Fijian administration does not signal a change of policy nor a change to the sanctions regime. Our commitment to democracy, the rule of law and human rights is undiminished. I hope that we will, as a result of this dialogue, be able to consider changes to the sanctions regime at some point in the future. That will require that we make progress on some of the important and difficult matters over which we currently disagree. There has been significant media interest in this matter here and in Fiji and some colourful reporting, not all of it fully accurate. For that reason, Mr Speaker, I wanted to brief the House today on these developments. I trust members will welcome the fact that we are making progress in small steps, but also appreciate that there will be significant challenges 
and no doubt the odd setback as we move forward. Thank you. The Honourable Chris Carter. Mr Speaker, the New Zealand Labour Party supports the government's efforts to strengthen the diplomatic capacity of our Suva mission and to use diplomatic channels to try to make progress on the outstanding political issues involving Fiji, New Zealand, the Pacific Forum and the Commonwealth. Mr Speaker, the links between the people of New Zealand and Fiji are strong. They are based on geographic proximity, a shared Commonwealth history and strong people-to-people -people links, particularly the large number of New Zealanders who were born in or who have family in Fiji. The Labour Party wants to resolve the problems that followed the overthrow of democracy and its replacement by a military regime. We support dialogue that seeks to achieve that objective. However, Mr Speaker, dialogue between New Zealand and Fiji must be a two-way process. Issues of concern in relation to Fiji have gotten worse over the last two years. To summarise, there is no clear timetable or commitment to restore the rights of Fiji's people to elect their own government in place of the current military regime. There has been, no, there has been direct interference by the administration in the independence of Fiji's judiciary. There has been a continuing censorship of media. There are overt restrictions on people's freedom of speech. There have been arbitrary arrests, killings and beatings of people in police cells, as reported recently by Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International and other respected NGOs. Labour believes that if sanctions are to be lifted, these issues will need to be addressed and responded to positively by the current regime in Fiji. Concessions by New Zealand and the Pacific Forum cannot send a message to the wider Pacific region that the overthrow of a democratically elected government by force does not have serious consequences. Should Foreign Minister McCulley meet Commodore Benny Morama in Hong Kong in March, we believe he will need to give a strong message that a clear pathway to the restoration of genuine democracy in Fiji is fundamental to improving relations between our two countries. Labour strongly desires the restoration of a positive relationship with Fiji and engaging in dialogue is important to achieving that. Success in achieving this, however, requires a positive response from the interim Fiji administration. Keith Locke. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. The Green Party uh, supports the Minister's statement. We support the uh, uh, opening of the uh, reopening of the High Commission in Fiji uh, and we favour dialogue. But we would say that this dialogue should be not just with the military regime but with all sections of the Fijian uh, community and shouldn't be seen as a sign that somehow things are getting better in Fiji because they are not. Uh, unfortunately, the longer the military regime stays in power, the more it gets used to being in charge, to throwing its weight around uh, and to abusing the rights of its citizens. Uh, so I don't see that this re-establishment of relations uh, is in any way an accommodation to the regime. In fact, uh, just uh, recently um, the three magistrates were uh, sacked on 30th uh, of December and this follows on the decision in uh, July last year to uh, get rid of the chief magistrate, uh, Ajmal Khan, and another magistrate, uh, so the judiciary is being seriously undermined. Uh, there's also been uh, continuing attacks on the media which have got worse recently, particularly uh, with changes to the sedition laws that enable people to be prosecuted and imprisoned uh, for even what they write on the internet, on blog sites, even Fijian citizens outside the country if they return to Fiji uh, can be subject to these uh, new sedition laws. Uh, the sedition laws also allow publications and